Hey guys, uh, this is going to be a quick Q&A type of video about the armor stacker um, covering some of the questions you guys have been asking. Um, let me know in the comments if I've forgotten something or if you have any other questions. Okay, so let's see. How do I level an armor stacker? Uh, pretty much you just want to do a smite twink, right? There's a, I'll link this Google Doc in the description. And it's got pretty much everything you need to level a smite twink okay you can uh, also check out um on youtube poe leveling and you'll get uh you know hundreds of guides about how to level with smite and okay so oh and after you level you'll probably be like what mid 60s or 60 right and you can just um go farm some breaches or and after that do your um five ways uh it's pretty, probably the best way to level any character uh, not just an armor stacker okay um so how did i leak start i leak started with spark inquisitor and i just farmed the endless heist for till what day three until i had all of my gear and i uh swapped over to the armor stacker Uh, definitely very good strategy uh, for first couple days of the league. Uh, make a lot of money. Maybe if you basically choose, you go. If you're gonna go do maps and you know rush, you know um, rush the maps, or you just rush heist. And for me, um, I don't usually play a lot on day one, so getting into heist is uh, a lot easier. Okay, uh, do we need to convert all of our physical damage to lightning? And the answer is no, you don't really need to. The only like physical damage we do is from uh, the sword, and it's not that much, as you can see. Um, and if we look at the Watcher's Eye, uh, which is somewhere, not in this POV, it's in this one. Uh, so it's only giving us 2.5%. And so if we converted it, uh let's say the rest of the damage it would probably be like what four percent damage if we fully convert it to lightning so really not that much uh probably a like a wrath you know pen mod or you know attack speed precision would definitely be more damage um yeah don't need to convert uh worry about converting all of the damage physical damage to lightning okay uh next i guess like the elephant in the room uh do i need voices and uh answer is no, you don't really need these. You can run any type of large cluster you want. Um, and the only real important thing is to make sure you're getting your, you know, 90% all res. And uh, in order to do this, you need a level 23 purity. And you get this by having a level 21 purity of ice inside an item. In this case, uh, my gloves that give a plus two to AOE or plus two to aura gems. And that with, uh, let's just look at the grace aura effect, or not grace, uh, purity of ice. That with at least 2.8 aura effect will get you to 90% all res. Okay, so for clusters, basically use whatever you want as long as you're hitting the 2.8 uh, aura effect mod. And of course, you know, getting more points means you can spend more points on ES, uh, more mana reservation, stuff like that. So it definitely helps uh, helps to build out a lot, but is it is uh, not really you know mandatory, right? Okay, and next, how do I build make the build with just mage blood, uh, mage blood, and no voices? So say you you have a mage blood and you know a couple couple of divines, and you want to make the builds. Um, so what do I need to do? Basically, you can use um the pre mage blood pob to get started, right? So you get started with this pob, and the only thing you change would be these uh the belt of course and the flasks and just copy the belt and flask setup from the uh mage blood pob basically this 
Okay, so and the rest of the gear it can be is um can be from the other POB. You can you know get some of these items. You want to get some grace effect rings. Um, but pretty much the gear all the same. The only thing that changes with the mage blood is the flasks. Um, and here, okay, so I guess we should talk about the Ashes of the Stars too. It wasn't in the notes here, but, uh, so you don't really need Ashes of the Stars. Um, it is more damage than the Eternal Struggle for sure, but, uh, it comes at a cost and the cost is you don't get aura effect. So at, uh, let's see. On lower budget virgin versions of the build, you won't have these voices. So let's say you're running the eight passive clusters. So you wouldn't have these three uh, introspection nodes. Uh, and if we look at the calcs, uh, let's see, we'll go to purity of ice. I'm at 2.9, okay? So I'm still getting my 90% all res, but that's because of this helmet, right? So I have a synthesized helmet with 15% increased effect of non-curse auras. And if I were to take this off, so say you didn't have the synthesized helmet, well, now that we're, we're down to 89%, right? So um, this couldn't be a problem. And so what I always do is I always upgrade to Ashes of the Stars when I get my helmet crafted, basically. So these two, the helmet, the synthesized helmet, and the Ashes of the Stars are kind of a set upgrade. You do it at the same time. Otherwise, you're going to uh, drop down to 89% all res. I mean, of course, if you have, let's say, just one, maybe a three passive voices, right? Uh, then you can actually you know, do the swap to Ashes without having to get your helmet. Um, that is, of course, I am actually using a 24% aura brutal brutal restraint. So let's say if I didn't have this, well, then I you'd have to have two one passives. I don't know, three passives, right? So um, it's just easier to get the helmet and the ashes of the stars at the same time. Otherwise, the uh, eternal struggle with the calling strike is probably. Um, a better option right okay uh how to hit the all the 90 all res cap and we kind of went over this but just to kind of go over it again you need to have at least 2.2.8 uh, 2 aura effect mod in the calcs and pob and a level 23 purity of ice Okay, uh, how do we cast Grace? Uh, this is where people get stuck a lot, I think. And uh, let's just see, in POB, you can actually go to your Grace and you can see the mana costing. See, it's costing uh, zero mana, and that's because we have it linked to uh, Divergent Inspiration, which um, like reduces the mana cost of the skill. And then we have the Increased Duration, the Anomalous version, which al also increases or decreases the mana cost. And then we're using this flask with the reduced mana cost of skills, craft, and all that together brings us down to zero mana cost for the grace uh, blessing. Uh, if you're on the non-mage blood version, you'll need a couple more things because you won't have the extra flask effect. So the gem setup is the same. The flask setup is almost the same, except we don't have the increased effect on our flask. And um, there's three ways you can kind of uh, get the rest of the um, the rest of the mana redu cost reduction. And one way is with the jewels. You need two jewels that have five percent reduced mana cost of skills. So you got one here, one here. Uh, or if you're using a very large Thread of Hope right here, you can pick up this uh, Dreamer node that gives you 10%. So just get one point here. Uh, or there's a Ring uh, Craft, which is 5% reduced mana cost of skills. You can get on both rings or like, you know, one ring, uh, one jewel and get your Grace mana cost down to, this is at 99% reduced. 
Uh, if you want to get 100% reduced on the non Mage Blood version, you probably just need a 2120 uh, inspiration. And then you go to um, zero. But yeah, 14 mana cost, I mean, that's, that's nothing at all, right? So 99% reduced is definitely enough. Uh, and why don't I use, you know, increased effect reservation jewels? And let's just quickly go back to this POB. And uh, I short answer is I don't really need to. Like, if I got it on every single jewel, I could probably get one more talent point somewhere, you know? And honestly, like, I don't really know where I'd put that point. Um, maybe eventually if I want to try going for a fourth cluster, I'll probably have to do that. But, uh, in the, you know, right now, um, there's no real need for it. I have my, uh, my mana set up pretty nicely. I have enough for all my auras and everything, so uh, there's no real need. I do have one, and I needed this one to have the 35% increased effect and introspection so that I could, you know, have enough mana, basically. But, um, yeah, it's something you can do in POB. Uh, every build is a little bit different in how much reservation you need, depending on, you know, how much mana you have and stuff like that. So uh, just go through your builds, and if you are lacking just, you know, a little bit of reservation, and say, you, you know, you took all of these nodes, and you still need a little bit more reservation then one way you can do that is to get one of these clusters i mean they are expensive um but it uh probably like last resort way of trying to fix your reservation would be to get one of these okay uh what pantheons do i use i'm using soul of the brian king and Ralakesh brian king mainly for the freeze uh, immunity and then the reduced effect of chill is also very nice the uh, Ralakesh basically makes you immune to bleeding because, I mean, bleed doesn't really do that much damage unless you're moving, right? And this kind of removes the downside. Uh, so bleeds don't really bother you once you have this. Um, we can talk about, I guess, an, uh, other ailment immunity. Uh, we're immune to shock with uh, Tempest Shield. And uh, Freeze is from Brian King, bleed from Ralakesh. We have a Corrupted Blood. Uh, jewel and the last one i guess that remains is the ignite right and ignite if we look at the calcs uh this is on the mage blood version we have about a hundred thousand a hundred thousand ehp to dots so i mean uh, that's you know quite a bit and ignites aren't really a problem when you have 90 all res and you have a ruby flask i mean even on the non mage blood version uh ignites never really bothered me that much you can see where we are we basically have like 50 percent less than the mage blood version but still with the you know reduced fire damage taken on the ruby flask and 90 all res you uh yeah you're not really gonna have a problem unless it's like a really really big ignite and i mean those aren't very common right so um that's that Okay, and what invocation to use? Um, I actually didn't really know invocations were a thing when I was making this character, so I never, I never planned to use one. But uh, the ones I would probably recommend and the ones I would probably use is definitely probably Leaf Shade is probably number one. Give you a little bit more time to survive against the uh, Mana Siphoners or, like, say, bosses with Degen like uh, Uber Cortex or, like, Uber Shaper, Cyrus, and stuff like that. Um, or uh, Iron Reflexes. If you have this on an invocation, you can actually drop all of these points. And, uh, yeah, save a lot of points this way. Or if you are trying to path around here, and I think when... If I do path around here, uh, you're going to be missing your stun immunity. So picking up an unwavering stance will allow you to drop all of these points and path up this way. And okay, yeah, so I would recommend one of those three. The other ones aren't really worth it. It's just like one point. So, you know, uh, definitely pick one of those three.
Okay, and then any tips on how to survive Mana Siphoner? Um, I made a video about this uh, the other day. Go check that out. It's on my channel. Uh, got a few tips in there. Okay, uh, what ascendancy? You know, champion, scion, juggernaut. Um, I've never played the champion version, but, you know, I've talked to quite a few uh, people who play the champion. And most of them are saying that it's um, not as tanky, definitely. Having some, they can't probably do wave 30 simulacrum, I think. Uh, probably better at uh, bosses, you know, just like one-shotting bosses, because you can get quite a lot of damage for uh, relatively cheap on the champion. Um, there is, uh, let's see, so champion, it seems like champion gets an advantage with the 30% increased effective non curse aura as you get here compared to the scions uh 15 percent but if we actually look at it uh scion picks up these two nodes here which uh you know ends up being more basically than champion so scion, scion will always have more aura effect in the end you get access to more to clusters more clusters uh ci you go ci you have aegis uh, a lot more tanky and uh better scaling into the end game also one big thing is uh not having necromancer on champion means you are losing um if you look at this this is um 18.2 percent of my damage so like you're losing what 20 percent damage from not having the attack speed from necromancer Actually, let's take a look on this Mage Blood version and let's see how much it's giving us. A little bit less on the end game version, I guess, but still um, about 24 million DPS that I would lose from not having the Necromancer. There is a uh, Juggernaut version that's very good. Uh, let's see, you can go find it on PoE Ninja. Uh, it's actually very cool uh, and I might try this one day. Because it does not use Doriani's prototype, I mean, you can actually use uh, Doriani's prototype, but we'll, we'll get into that in a sec. So, uh, let's see, week seven. Uh, is it week seven or was it week eight, I think? Uh, no. It is week six, maybe. Oh, maybe not. Let's check week five. Okay, week nine. There wasn't a lot of people doing it. I think, um... So it's, there's only a certain, there was a certain period where the guy, uh, you can see the POB. Let's look at week four. I think we went a bit too far. Maybe week one. Okay, yeah, so here we have Jodox, the, uh, the OG armor stacker. <laughs> or I don't know, but let's see. So, um, I guess this is what it would look like with the Doriani's prototype, but the, um, basically the unbreakable node on Juggernaut is insane for defense. And with this on our armor stacker means you will be immune, pretty much immune to any kind of elemental damage and, you know, pretty much all physical damage as well. Uh, so you get a lot of defense. Uh, from going Juggernaut. Uh, you definitely lose a lot of damage, but uh, on the upside, you are going to get a lot more defense uh, on the Juggernaut. And let's see, so if we if we look through the couple weeks, uh, there was one point here, he went over to Berserker with the Forbidden Flame and Flesh to get the Unbreakable, and you use the Grasping Mail. So you don't have to use uh, Doriani's prototype. You can use the Grasping Mail. So, you, you know, the mana guys aren't going to be a problem. Um, and 
Uh, the important thing here is, of course, the 50% increased global defenses and evasion rating is increased by overcapped cold resistance. So you basically just stack a bunch of, you know, cold resistance and um, uh, that gets converted to evasion and then the evasion gets converted to armor. And so you end up having uh, tons of armor. Um, it's probably about 50, 60% less damage than the Doriani's prototype version. But uh, on the upside, it is, you know, a lot more tanky. Like, I don't think there is much in the game that'll that will kill you on this build. Um, let me see if we can find the snapshot when he had his uh, nice gear. Maybe around week five, week four. Um, if it even comes up. Okay, here we go. So now this is sort of uh, what what I wanted to show you guys. You can uh, take a look at um, this and you can see the damage isn't all that great. But on the upside, there is probably nothing in the game that can actually kill you uh, on this setup. And it's not 4.4 million DPS. Uh, PoE Ninja won't calculate all of these introspection uh, giving you aura effect. So in reality, it's probably closer to about 30 to 40 million DPS, maybe 50 ish. But anyways, yeah, that's it. Um, thanks for watching guys. Uh, let me know if I forgot anything and like, and subscribe. All right. See you next time. Bye.